here's an interesting one that's landed on the autopsy bench. This is um, an RD128. <clears throat> this is the current offering from ARB. It has um, a few Achilles heels, um, and this one has got one of the big ones that I can actually now show you and demonstrate why you should consider pegging your differential, especially an RD128. The three Achilles heels on this particular differential is leaking here on the air coupling ring where it meets this flange. Um, what happens is the O-rings rubber groove into the flange, it then starts to leak air. You put a new pair of seals in and they don't seem to last very long before it starts leaking again and that's because this flange here has had it. Um, and the only way to really fix that is to put a new end flange on which are seriously expensive because there's quite a lot of machining in them. And there's not a lot you can do about that. It is just one of those things that if you've got an ARB, whatever model, uh, not even Land Rover, any model ARB, tends to be a problem because, as we've shown in other videos, when this assembly is moving, the O-rings inside here are being rubbed against things and therefore will wear. The other Achilles heel is the really daft copper pipe, uh, which goes across the top of the crown wheel. And as you can see with this one, it has really had some stick um, and it's on its last legs. I don't know if you can see here, but there's an almighty wound that this has picked up over the time and also here where it's been rubbing up against the case. Now we do do a fix for that, which actually uses this bolt here and this bolt here and actually strengthens the pipe as it goes over the top of the crown wheel. So that's one fix. The other fix is what is actually wrong with this unit. Um, as you can see, I can turn the gears there and I can turn the gears here and that one drives. Unfortunately the customer says he can't get the crown wheel to move really, which I can't, and when he tries to drive it nothing happens. So I'm going to take this apart and you'll see why the ARB has an Achilles heel. Okay I've set the camera up and I'm just going to take these four bolts out now and um, pull this apart so you can have a look. So the first thing I'm going to do is take the little uh, o-ring coupler out. This is the bit that gets damaged as you can see here quite badly and it's sheared off here as well so that's had it. There's 70 quid gone for starters. Um, and now I'm going to take the carrier caps out which I think will expose what the problem is. Now the compressor's shut off, we'll take the carrier caps off, uh, we'll take out the special adjuster ring, it should now lift the centre out. OK. We're now going to pull the crown wheel off, and here we go. Not very tight. In fact, in fact you can see these are all wet, which indicates they haven't been loctited. this off and taking that gear out there's the ARB unit interesting now oops uh, there's your problem uh, the center cages on these have a habit of shearing off uh, this is part of that give me a minute I'll get this crown wheel off okay we've got the crown wheel off now and as you can see what's happened is this piece here has sheared completely off the uh, centre tube. Um, now I'll try and explain why this has happened. Um, if you actually look at this, this is quite a thin bit of metal here, it's probably uh, three and a half, four mil, and that's really all that's holding this on is this piece here. Looking at this, <coughs> and I'm no specialist on metals, but I can tell you this has been stressed and uh, this is showing signs of metal fatigue and shearing. And this is because the way that it sits in the diff, um, the way that it sits in the diff, the crown wheel is constantly being flexed by the fact that piston is pushing this crown wheel away. So what you've got in effect with the crown wheel here is this, this part is being pushed away by the action of the pinion. And over a period of time, what's happened is this has sheared the centre of this ARB completely apart. So, 
I'm going to pull that apart now and see what other damage he's done. Righty ho, sometime later we got the ARB completely in bits now. So I'm going to try and explain this to you and give you a demonstration of how the pegging would have stopped this happening. This is the case which is the centre tube of the ARB, which um, this piece here should be part of that and has sheared off. So, and that would be one piece like that. Now under here, coming up where my finger is, would be the crown wheel. And then on the top here would be the end flange plate. So if I take the end flange plate away and I take the spacer away, I slide this up the imaginary tube and it's now reaching this piece here. So underneath here would be this piece which is sheared off. And then on top of there, that piece goes on. So bear with me while I just assemble. Okay, I put three bolts in. So what we have here is we have the crown wheel. In the centre there we have what would be the lip flange of the centre tube and on the top the side plate. So in effect, if I lift this up and put it on there, that would be the way that the unit would normally look. But what's happened is this is sheared off. I'll show you how. So the centre is here and is now missing. But the crown wheel's here and it's sitting on its bearing, on its end flange, with here the centre tube flange and the crown wheel meshing with the pinion. Now as that pinion there pushes away under load, and I'm vastly exaggerating it here, but basically that's what's happening inside the diff when you overload it. There's nothing to stop it physically, like a corkscrew action, pushing that pinion away. Now when it does that, what it normally will do will actually take the tips of the teeth off. But in this case, and on the RD128s, what it does is it shears off, and you can see there the inside flange, and it shears that off. Now the way to fix this is to peg it on the inside. Now here is one of our peg casings, and here you see the two bolts that are sticking out, and these two bolts are going to have a phosphor bronze pad placed across it. On the outside here, here are the bolts for adjusting, and here's all the piece that we've welded in, or TIG welded and ready to go. So this is just a dummy case I'm using. And what happens is that phosphor bronze pad sits here on the bottom of the crown wheel, in here, forcing this crown wheel to stay in mesh with the pinion. So I'm going to put the pad in now so you can get a... Okay, so now we're back, we have the phosphor bronze pad here. This pad, because it's screwed through the casing, there's about 27mm of metal that this is, these two M16 bolts are screwed into, and then the phosphor bronze pad sits on the end. It can actually float up and down and left and right a little bit. And that then allows us to put the crown wheel back in, and as the crown wheel goes back in, so, hopefully you're following us now. Here's your pinion, and here's the crown wheel. And this is bolted to the centre tube that goes across here, that is sheared off down in this point here. So the centre tube is now missing. And the reason is that before the crown wheel was able to flex away from the pinion. Now what we've done, on the far side of this crown wheel, so if you like, if you look at the top of the crown wheel here, and go down inside the casing, so somewhere deep inside here, right down in the bottom there, you've now got a phosphor bronze pad that is pushing against the crown wheel. So when the pinion tries to push the crown wheel away, what happens is the crown wheel actually hits the pad and stops. So it causes the crown wheel to stay in constant mesh between the pinion and the crown wheel. That indeed then stops the flexing here, which has sheared the centre tube off. Because this is a very weak point. Pegging not only will protect your crown wheel by causing constant mesh so it stops the teeth being chipped, but here on the RD128 what it will do is stop the centre tube cracking, which is a very expensive repair. In case you think this is a bit of a one-off, here's another one. Same problem, same thing. These are well over £150 to replace and that's before you start. The bits of shrapnel that have come off here and got inside the gear sets, the gears on this one I think will go again. We need to clean them up and have a really good look, but I think the gears are all okay because when this shears, basically all drive stops completely. So it's only the bits that are floating around, and to be honest, it could just be wear, but the, um, the thrusts are all had it. The centre here is not very nice, but I think we've got a new one kicking around somewhere. Um, so it needs a, a lot of loving. 
So in the words of Sooty, uh, Izzy Wizzy, let's get busy. ta -da! The ARB lives again, although with a lot of money spent on it. So there's a centre tube, complete set of thrusts, a piston, it's going to have seals, and as you can see here, we've actually decided to turn it down so we can actually peg it straight away. Um, we've got an Ashcroft case floating around that we're going to put it in, which means we need to reduce the OD here to clear the pegging system. Our pegging system doesn't have this problem, so it needs some further new bearings each end, but other than that, here we go. But this one won't suffer from it again because we're going to peg it. There'll be a part two where we build this up uh, into a peg case with our copper pipe reinforcing system. Hope you enjoy the video. Part two will be along shortly. Yeah.